Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and today we've got our PM1130V set up with a DRO. I often get questions about using a DRO on a lathe, so I thought we could use today's video to go over some basics. We'll be using our LCD DRO today, but everything we cover will apply to just about any lathe DRO you might have. Let's get started. First things first, the x-axis measures the movement of the cross slide. That may seem obvious, but if everyone knew that, I would get a couple dozen fewer calls per year than I currently do. Yes, it is different from how it is on the mill, and yes, it is different from the Cartesian plane that you remember from middle school math class. Second thing second, the motion along the carriage of the lathe is the z-axis, because the z-axis on any machine is the axis that is parallel to the main spindle. Some DROs list this as the z-axis, some list it as y, and some even put y slash z. So why the confusion? Enough universal DROs are out there that just put X and Y for the two axis that people start believing that the carriage movement is the Y axis. My position on that is whoever I'm talking to, whatever they say is correct. We have limited time on this earth and I'm not gonna spend mine arguing whether it's Y or Z, but for the record, it's Z. And I don't wanna hear from my Canadian brothers and sisters that it's Z. I need the letter Z to rhyme with, now I know my ABCs, or the song doesn't work. That I will argue about. I'm going to show you the two main methods that people use to turn a diameter with a lathe DRO. The method that you use is going to depend on whether you want to think about these numbers in radius or diameter. Radius being the amount that the tool moves, and diameter being the amount of material removed. And we'll start with the diameter method. In our DRO, you can tell it's in diameter mode because the x-axis turns red. On other DROs, it displays the Greek letter phi or an indicator light illuminates. Either way, there's gonna be some indication that you're in diameter mode. And much like in the mill DRO video, I'm gonna use a Sharpie marker and cardboard to make it obvious what I'm doing. You can imagine that the Sharpie marker is a cutting tool and the line that it makes is the circumference of the part that we're cutting. Using this method, or just about any method, the first step is to take a skim cut. In this case, we'll just draw the first line with the marker. Next, if this were an actual cut, you would use an outside micrometer to measure the OD that you just created. In my case, I'm using calipers because I don't think that a Sharpie mark needs to be measured to the 10,000th of an inch. My initial measurement of that diameter is 5.784 inches. I enter that into the x-axis, and I don't worry that it rounds it to the nearest micron since the scale is actually measuring in metric and converting to inches. Let's say my goal is to produce a diameter of 3 inches. I'll just continue to take cuts until the DRO says 3 inches on the x-axis. That's the beauty of diameter mode. You just measure what you have, enter that value into the DRO, and move until the DRO says the measurement that you want. Sanity check here with the calipers, and the diameter is indeed 3 inches, at least within the precision allowed by the Sharpie marker. Next, we'll do an example of if we prefer to work in radius mode. You can see now that the x-axis shows in black text, indicating radius mode. That is, we're measuring the direct movement of the cross slide, and the material we actually remove will be double that measurement. Again, we start with our simulated skim cut. And this time, instead of entering the measured diameter, we will just zero out the x-axis on the DRO. Then I measure the diameter produced by that skim cut. In this case, it measures 3.673 inches. This time, we're aiming for 2 inches, so we have 1.673 inches of material to remove. Now remember that we're measuring radius, so we need to cut that in half to get 0.8365, which is the amount that we need to move the cross slide in order to remove 1.673 inches of material. So we'll just move the cross slide until it says negative 0.8365 and that cut should produce a part that is 2 inches in diameter.
quick sanity check here. And I need to remember where the camera is pointed and we're at two inches. This same DRO technique works to face or part off a workpiece at a specific length. And it's even more idiot proof because you don't have to worry about radius or diameter. You can start by touching off the tool at the very end of the workpiece to get our reference datum. Then zero out the DRO. Let's say I want to take exactly one inch off of this workpiece. I simply move the carriage until it reads one inch on the DRO. Then I take my parting or facing cut. Rest in peace to this Sharpie marker. When it left the factory, all its peers said that it was destined to be lost in couch cushions or at best write some graffiti on a bathroom stall. But this marker got to be a lathe tool, if only briefly. Thanks, little guy. You served well. So there you have it. That should cover the basics of how to use your lathe DRO effectively. In a future video, we'll go over some more advanced lathe DRO features, namely how tool offsets can be stored and recalled to eliminate having to touch off your workpiece every time you change tools. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and don't miss that video. As always, thanks for watching.